Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me. If you're watching this on replay, thanks for watching. Tonight, again, more testimonies, more teaching, and more healing ministry. Um, I kind of want to go back and, and talk about why we're doing this again and what we're doing. Uh, we've been doing this for um, around a month, a little over a month maybe. I'm just coming on Facebook Live and uh, doing a live stream to heal and to teach healing and to teach about the kingdom and the responsibility as sons of God to manifest the power of God as uh, prisoners being liberated. And we have to begin to view sick people and people who are under attack of the enemy as prisoners of war. And um, going back to kind of the very beginning, um, one of the reasons that we did this, number one, is that we started receiving miracles. Miracles started happening. That's reason enough to begin to take responsibility, to begin stewarding, to begin um, holding hands with this, with this thing in a, in a faithful and diligent way. To see how far we can take it, to see what God wants to do, and to see how many prisoners we can set free. I don't know how many gardeners there are out there, but my wife and my mother-in-law have put in a garden this year, and it's glorious. But let me tell you, they didn't just plant some seeds and, re and receive glory. <laughs> they put in diligence and faithfulness and hard work and watering and and pruning and weeding and all of these things, and they researched how you know, what kind of dirt does it take to grow the best garden? When you get a plant that shoots through the ground, you take you take responsibility for that plant. You don't just, you know, if a critter comes along and tries to eat it, uh, you know, a raccoon or a rabbit or a deer, those things are the enemy of your garden. And that's how the kingdom works. We have an enemy. And whenever we start to produce the fruit of the life of Jesus, I guarantee you he will try to come and steal it. The Bible says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he sold the body of Christ alive and twisted that around. He's twisted that verse around. And many believe that God um, is the one that's stealing, killing, and destroying. You know, if, for example, how many times have you heard a tornado or a hurricane called an act of God? And that is not an act of God. If it's destroying, if it's stealing, uh, this is the work of the enemy. And Jesus said, I have come to destroy the works of the enemy. And he did, and we are. We are following in his footsteps. He has given us all authority and all power in the most incredible way that most people do not even realize. I would even say that it's a secret to most Christians uh, what Jesus has done and made available to us. We don't access it because of things, well, we'll just say two things, and these are the things that Jesus taught. Why don't we access what Jesus has given us? Number one, unbelief. We can read that in the story where Jesus comes off the Mount of Transfiguration, and there is a young man there who has been uh, demonized for quite some time, and it tries to kill the young boy, and uh, the father brought the boy to the disciples to try to get him free. And while Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration glowing and, you know, blowing up like a, a lightning bolt, the disciples are failing at the bottom of the mountain. And Jesus shows up and begs, the father begs Jesus, please heal my son. Your disciples weren't strong enough, is one translation. Another translation says uh, that um, they didn't have enough power. But we know that there's two things that, that are, well, let me start here. There's a blanket statement. Number one, the only hindrance to healing is the fact that you believe there are hindrances to healing, period. This is the truth, and I'm right about this. Now, there are things that when I pray, it stops the, it stops the, the power of God. Nothing that you do can stop the power of God when I pray for you. But when I pray, there's two things. Unbelief in my own heart. Now, if I'm praying for you and you have unbelief, it doesn't matter. What matters is, 
that the person praying, ministering healing, does not have unbelief. If I have unbelief in my heart, then I am unable to access this gift of God that's inside of me, the Spirit of God, which contains all of the riches of the, the, the glorious riches of Christ, the unsearchable riches of Christ. And yes, in fact, even God Himself is accessible by the Spirit. If I have unbelief, I am not going to access the kingdom realm of God. Uh, number two is uh, Jesus says that he, he, he told the uh, religious leaders of that day that they had created so many traditions of men that they nullify the word of God. And we have done that. We have created traditions or believed traditions that nullify or make powerless the word of God. And one of these I alluded to earlier when we believe that God gives people sickness for some reason. You cannot find that in the New Testament. It does not exist in it and he does not do it, nor will he ever do it. Why? Because this, the stripes of Jesus were put on his back by the Father for our healing. We were healed. He can't go back on his word. He, will ne he is unable to go back on his word. So you can see in the light of that, we just pull the cover off of that lie real quick and see how preposterous, preposterous it is to believe that God would be so double-minded. He cannot be double-minded. In him is no shadow turning. There's no darkness. It's only light. And that light is revealed through the manifestation of his Son on the earth, Jesus Christ. And by his stripes or by his wounds, we were healed. The stripes of Jesus is what purchased our healing. It was done 2,000 years ago, and he can never go back. Uh, maybe you've got some, own, some of your own traditions and beliefs that you are thinking about now. Um, I have done my best to push these out of my life, so I don't try to, uh, you know, they just, I don't, they're not on automatic recall, let's say. So, um, but I would inspect your thinking, inspect your believing, and see whether there are, there are some things that you believe that, about God, that is uh, preventing breakthrough in your own life. All right. So, this is HealJoplin.com. That's the website on, at HealJoplin.com. Anyone can go and submit a prayer request, and that comes to us in the form of an email. When we receive that email, we'll actually record, voice record, a healing, uh, healing ministry for you or whoever it is that's sick and send it right back. Um, usually the turnaround on that is 24 hours or less, and it's a short 20, 30 second prayer that you can pray uh, over your own life or your loved one's life. Those have been very powerful and very effective. Also at HealJoplin.com, you can request what's called a prayer cloth. And these are um, just cloths that uh, we have uh, declared healing over, prayed over, um, touched with our hands. Um, and the, the, uh, the legality of this is out of Acts 19, 11, and 12. It says that, God released a flow of, su of supernatural, extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul. So much so, that they took from him, from his body, a uh, aprons, handkerchiefs, articles of clothing, things that had touched his skin. Okay, And Paul, it, it doesn't even say this, Paul didn't even really pray over these things. These are things that were just, he wore, he may have you know, had an apron on, or he may have had a, a handkerchief. And they took these things from his body. Nowadays, we pray over them, but honestly, that's really not what happened in the Bible. They just took these things from him. <clears throat> Can you imagine, you know, you have a loved one who's, who's uh, on death's door, and there's Paul, and he's got a handkerchief out of his back pocket. What do you do? You just run over there and grab it. <laughs> Take off with it, and then go put that on your, your loved one. Well, it says that when they did that, they laid the, the, um, the articles of clothing on the sick, and those who were demon, uh, demonized, demon-possessed, and that they were healed, and demons left them just from an article of clothing. And we have seen stage four cancers healed like this. We've seen, uh, we had one guy um, that, where someone took a prayer cloth to him, and he had been hit by a semi on foot. So this was not a car-to-car -car collision. This was a semi-man on foot collision, and he had uh, lots of lacerations 
um, in his head and uh, you know the swelling was there and just black and blue and he had two I believe two injuries on his spine one in his neck and one in his back they did surgery the day they brought they brought him in and there was another injury that was too risky to have surgery on uh, quite yet that's when someone came in with one of these prayer cloths they laid it on his body said be healed in the name of Jesus and that man left the hospital two days later back at work so we've seen so many tremendous things happen with these prayer cloths so you can get one of those at healjoplin.com fill out the form we'll mail it to you also we're doing these uh, virtual healing rooms these live streams um, for, for two reasons and for two groups of people one for the sick uh, and the dying people that are um, you know that need to be healed that need healing who are suffering who are in pain who have been prayed for a thousand times who have been given a death sentence or are dead we want all those people we want to set them free we want to speak the word of life to them we want to liberate them and why do we want to do that I'll tell you I don't know why what your reason would be here is my reason my reason is because I'm a son of God and we uh, have this uh, thing where we're taking responsibility for the liberation of prisoners in our region so I don't know where you live but I live in southwest Missouri in Joplin so I live here my authority is here this is my ground this is my city this is my region and I take authority when anyone gets attacked in my region it is personal to me it is personal to me could you imagine if all the Christians or let's just say even half of the Christians in your city began to take every single attack that came against the people of that city uh, personally yeah you would begin to have a kingdom family of first responders of warriors that begin to to be trained in liberation who knew how to take authority and liberate prisoners in any situation by bringing the limitless riches of Christ to bear the power of God to bear in every situation there is no situation that cannot be overcome by faith in the power of God in Jesus name so our first group we're talking to is the sick the second group is the sons of God the sons of God like I was just speaking about in order for us to step into who we are we have to take responsibility when a police officer or a fireman puts on their uniform they step out of their civilian life and Paul wrote about this he says no one who's going to operate who's going to um, conduct themselves as a good soldier continues to uh, embroil themselves in civilian affairs or entangle themselves in civilian affairs we step out of our own uh, civ civilian affairs of life in order to take a greater responsibility because a greater thing is on us we have a thing that's on us just like Jesus he said when he got up in in the book of uh, well it's in a couple books but he got up and he, he read the scripture from Isaiah he said that this is the year of the favor of the Lord and he went on to declare that he was here to set captives free in Jesus name so that's who we are we are anointed with the anointing of Jesus to set captives free so sons of God unless we are intentional about taking responsibility for our region we're going to live and die and we're not going we're going to abort the thing that God had for our generation in this season yes we can do all kinds of ministry things yes we can do all kinds of building things we can build personal things we can do personal things in the kingdom but until we begin to turn cities upside down until we begin to figure out or understand how to release the power of God at will into any situation and to win when we do it we will not turn cities upside down and that is at the very least our call in fact Jesus said go make disciples of all nations so we have gotta learn how to win a city before we can disciple a nation and uh, so I charge all the sons of God out there this is our purpose this is our goal so two audiences the sons of God and the sick we've got to become liberators we've got to become soldiers with a mindset of we will win at all costs we've got to begin to employ ourselves in study in prayer and discipline and fasting and seeking God understand how to submit ourselves to heaven in order to bring heaven to bear in any situation in Jesus name so 
Um, we started this because of those things. We started this because, number one, healing was happening. Number two, we want to mobilize the sons of God. And for right now, you know, this is a great forum to do this because of um, all the fear surrounding uh, the virus that's in the uh, earth right now, the COVID-19 virus. People are staying home. People aren't gathering in large gatherings. We, you know, we tend to um, rely on our gatherings maybe a little bit too much uh, instead of our personal responsibility to begin to understand how to release the kingdom of God freely into the earth. Well, we may do some after, um, after the, the virus settles down and we get a hold on this thing and cities start to open up a little more freely. We may do some healing rooms. And if you're watching in another city and you want to do a, like a, maybe a healing seminar, maybe a day thing and a night meeting, uh, we want to do that. We want to come and we want, we want to, <laughs> we want to liberate prisoners in a really big way. So um, if that's you, just reach out to us, healjoplin.com. Now, last year, uh, my family and I, uh, we, we received a heart circumcision from the Lord. <laughs> what that mean? What does that mean? That means that uh, we got cut. Jesus came and cut us really good. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. Jesus says that he comes and prunes. He's a pruner. He's a, he's a gardener. He knows how to come and, and prune the vine and, and bring up the branches from the ground that aren't bearing fruit and bring them up so that we can maximize our fruit potential. And he did that in our family last year. And when Jesus comes and, and, and you're, I mean, it's not like it was out of nowhere. We wanted this. I mean, we are serious fasters and prayers. We'd have no other agenda except for heaven come on the earth right now as much as possible in Jesus name. And we submit ourselves to that. I'm an every other day faster. So I fast no less than six months a year. I'm a, about a hundred chapter a day Bible reader or Bible. I actually listen to the Bible so I can listen to it and pray it. It's constantly going for me. I am in this. I am waiting on the Lord. I'm in prayer uh, hours a day, and um, and I live and have a full time job, a family, just like everybody else. But I figured out how to discipline my life to 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 get uh, to to find Him. And Jeremiah twenty nine says that. That if we seek him, with, if you'll seek me with all of your heart, then you'll find me. And we must begin to, to realize what does it look like for me to seek God with all my heart. Son of God, what does it look like for you to seek him with all of your heart? Until you find that, you won't find him. All right? So we began, we got this circumcision of heart, and it was a, free, as a freeing thing and a freedom thing. But it also was a violent thing because when, when God came and touched our lives with that circumcision, it cut everything. It cut into every area of our life. And we got a violence on the inside and aggression on the inside. And we began to be able to uh, put our hands on things that were previously unaccessible to us. Jesus says, uh, he told his uh, disciples this, in fact. He said, uh, go as you go. And he sent them out to all these different cities. Go, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And literally what that means is, when something's at hand, it's so near that I can actually grab it and touch it. Yet so many people live a life without touching the kingdom. They live a life without touching Jesus. They live a life without touching victory and power. They live a life without winning. They, they live a life with a lot of church things and a lot of activities, but it's very rare to see someone who's walking in the literal footsteps of Jesus, where they're touching everything that's dead and seeing it come to life. So we began to respond to this violence, this aggression that came inside of us. And it's an, it's an aggression that comes from the Spirit of God and it's aggression, it's the same aggression that Jesus walked in. And oftentimes we don't see that picture painted of Jesus. But when he stood outside of Lazarus's tomb, whom, had, whom he had been dead for four days or more maybe, um, he, he was there in that tomb and Jesus wept in that situation. He went there on purpose. He was moved with compassion and he wept. And then he cried in a loud voice. A loud voice with authority. He said, Lazarus, come forth. 
And that aggression is what releases power, uh, and that power does the Word of God. It, it takes the Word of God and, um, re- and causes it to, to return with the thing that it was declared for. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. And we began to steward that. And as we began to steward this life that was happening in our midst, we began to gain a greater focus, and otherworldly focus came in our midst, and we began to walk in a union with Jesus that has never happened before in you know twenty some years of being born again, seeking Jesus, being a revival person, being a fire person, being a a worship leader who leads other people into the presence. We found I found something that I've never found before, and it was there the whole time. But because of following men, believing lies, having a divided heart, the cares of this world, all these things, I was blinded. But once you touch, see, Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you'll ask anything of the Father and it shall be done for you. That's what we need. That's what we want. That's what's going to turn cities upside down. That's what's going to disciple nations. So we began to um, pray for people. And when we would hear someone sick, I remember one of the first times I was sitting outside with my friend. And uh, he said, hey, my mom is sick. And all of a sudden, this thing happened to me that that began happening uh, out of nowhere. The Spirit of God, because he had the freedom to, um, up, began to oppose the work of the enemy. He said, my mom's got leukemia. She's most of her blood is consumed with leukemia. It's not good. The Spirit of God just was almost like he bore his teeth, (laughs) you know, super aggressive, like now. And so I said, we're going to pray right now. And so several thousand miles away, I just spoke the word of healing to his mother in Jesus' name. You will live and not die. Cancer, go in Jesus' name. Be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. And from that moment on, her numbers dipped. Uh, and over the next 60-ish days, her numbers descended dramatically. Now the leukemia is untraceable, according to the doctor. And then we begin to see more and more things like that. And I've told the story of the Vietnam, or not the Vietnam vet, but the Iraq war vet, who had 15 incurable problems with him. He was a double uh, Purple Heart recipient, other awards. But he, he was on the first wave into Baghdad, actually received brain damage from all the close impact explosions, had no jelly or cushion around his brain any longer, uh, severely debilitated in many ways, couldn't work, not to mention PTSD, fibromyalgia, and all sorts of incurable things, was on a lot of medications just to cope with life. He wasn't coping at all. He was barely surviving. He was the shell of the man that once was, in fact, his kids were so small when he went to war that when he came back, they didn't even know the real dad that went to war. Well, we laid hands on him and uh, prayed in the name of Jesus, just like this, be made whole. The power of God hit him. He went into this contorted thing and went to a train, crumpled into a chair and went to a trance. He was gone. He was not there. Like, he's just not there. And for 15 minutes, God created that man a brand new body. In 15 minutes, God healed 15 incurable problems with him, uh, healed the brain damage, gave him a cushion around his brain. All the symptoms associated with all the war trauma left him. And he's a brand new man. He's a brand new man. God gave that family their husband back and their dad back. And he said to me, God gave me the body of a teenager. Awesome. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. So we've been stewarding miracles in our midst. Uh, Several stage four cancers healed. Many other testimonies of God doing amazing things. I'm thinking of one now where there was a teenager, a teenage boy, and he had a tooth fused to um, his jaw or his skull up really high. And the orthodontist had been trying to pull that tooth down with wire and braces and cranking it and trying to pull it down for about a year but instead of that tooth coming down into place all his other teeth started moving up well we prayed for that young man and my wife she said that she saw uh, the area around the tooth turn into jello 
And so we begin to speak to that tooth to begin to be loosed and migrate into its correct spot. And within one week, that tooth had defused from the jawbone, from the skull bone, and they were able to pull it right down into place, no problem. So many, many amazing, amazing little testimonies like that. God is doing miracles. God is freely flowing here, and we're doing our best to get it to just flow stronger and better and more consistent. And that's why we're on the stream today is because we want people to know that there's help and there's hope. Not everybody has, a lot of people get their hope in medicine, and medicine is healing some. But for some, their condition is beyond medicine. Their condition is beyond what man can do. And now we want to step in with what God can do in that situation. A um, couple testimonies. Uh, we have been, we've prayed for these live actually. Uh, I've got one here from, um, oh, it's right here. So we were praying for a family who got hit by a semi uh, while they were driving. <clears throat> so there was a small child that was in critical condition that actually was on a ventilator because of this. And uh, we received this on the last day of June, I believe. And so the child was on, on a ventilator, had multiple major broken bones, slight breeding uh, bleeding on the brain, contusions to several organs. And uh, we began, we sent out um, prayer for that, and we got the word back uh, yesterday that this child has been sent home. I don't have other details beyond that, but he got sent home. That's always, always good. Um, I had another young child who was diagnosed with leukemia, and at the time they sent us the prayer request, this child was in the hospital and had been there for four days without eating. And I think pain was involved and thing like, things like that. And we actually, they submitted a prayer request. We recorded a prayer and sent it back so they could play it over this child. And then I, and now, so I've just heard back from the family that um, the child was sent home and that he's eating now and that the doctors say that uh, in fact this leukemia is of, of, a, of a variety that they believe he'll be in full remission within the next 30 days hallelujah thank you Jesus uh, many others many other little things and, and testimonies we're hearing back but we want to pray tonight we want to minister life to you tonight and as I was just uh, waiting on the Lord before we began to stream here, I sensed that many people, and I know this for a fact, but I've sensed the emphasis from the Holy Spirit, that uh, many people are dealing with um, voices. <clears throat> so voices that speak to you, uh, influences that uh, influence you, fear that causes you, uh, that causes a reaction in you. And many people don't realize that they're in this situation, but um, people who are under the influence of voices or under the influence of fear or panic or anxiety, or even some people just have a certain dread that they expect. They just have a, just a, a looming dread. They're expecting it's just an expectation of dread constantly. I have to tell you that this is not normal. It is not normal to live with dread. It is not normal to live with fear. It is not normal to live with anxiety. It is not normal to live with voices. What kind of voices are you hearing? Maybe you're hearing voices that say you're going to die. Or maybe you're hearing voices that say your children are going to die. Or your husband's going to die. Or maybe you're hearing voices that something horrible is going to happen. Or maybe you're hearing voices about uh, other people's opinions about you. These voices are not coming from you. They are coming from your enemy. And you have all authority over your enemy. The thing is, you have to begin to realize and take captive what's happening to you. You don't realize it because it's just become normal. It's become a way of life. And you just, you know, maybe you even just have thought it yourself. That's me thinking these thoughts. And we get on, on this, uh, this merry-go-round or this wheel 
of just around and around and around. And we're just going through endless, horrible scenarios about how our life is going to happen. That is not normal, and that's the enemy. That is a work of darkness, and we're going to defeat that in your life. And I want you to listen to how I do it, and then I want you to do that when he tries to come back on you. <coughs> so let's do that. I'm going to speak to all these things. And then I'm just going to release in general healing. If the Lord speaks to me, I'll release healing for other things. Um, if you have a prayer request, don't forget you can go to healjoplin.com and submit that. If you know people who are sick, please help us reach out to them. Add them to this uh, to the Heal Joplin uh, Facebook group or uh, reach out to us uh, at, uh, on the email at heal, uh, healjoplin.com. All right. In the name of Jesus, tormentors, listen to me. You loose that person. Be free in Jesus' name. Anxiety, leave. Panic, leave. Fear, leave. Torment, leave. Doom, leave in the name of Jesus. I silence every voice that's on your life. You will speak to that person no longer in the name of Jesus. I command you to go and never come back. In the name of Jesus, it will be this way and no other in Jesus' name. Now to all those experiencing pain, pain, go in Jesus' name. Mystery pain, go in the name of Jesus. Pain that's there for no reason, go in the name of Jesus. Phantom pain, go in Jesus' name. Migraines and headaches, go in the name of Jesus. Pain that's there from a traumatic event or a surgery, leave and be made whole in Jesus' name. Now, for all of you, all those out there that are experiencing something more serious, uh, maybe this is a life-threatening thing, or maybe this is a chronic thing, we're going to speak to that. All chronic disease, go in the name of Jesus. You be healed and made whole. I liberate you in Jesus' name. Be free in the name of Jesus. Now, every death sentence... In the name of Jesus, I cancel you. This is a life sentence that I decree over this person. You will live and not die in Jesus' name. Sickness leave. Disease leave. In the name of Jesus, it will be this way and no other. So be it. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, if you know others that would enjoy uh, the teaching or others that need the ministry or others that you think would just enjoy connecting, please uh, connect them to the Facebook group, Heal Joplin, or connect them to HealJoplin.com. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week, Tuesday and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Submit your healing uh, requests at healjoplin.com. Thanks for watching.